London is a poem which represents Britain's capital city as a bleak place of inequality, pain and desperation. It's a brilliant poem, but with so much to write about, it can be hard to know what to focus on in a GCSE exam. With that in mind, here are five focus quotations from William Blake's London. One, every voice, every cry. As Blake wanders through the streets of London, he sees the oppression of the poor everywhere. The poor suffer in a society where the authorities control all aspects of employment, living standards and education. The control isn't just something he sees, he also hears evidence of this oppression and control. Blake uses the senses of seeing and hearing to show us his personal journey, and one that's very real. He hears every voice, every cry, and the noun cry suggests sounds of great pain and protest. The repetition of the word every hammers home the point that all society is controlled without exception. No one escapes the oppression. The dense repetition of every, which is used several times, shows us that in London even words are limited, highlighting the idea of authority taking control over the language itself. Blake lived in London and would have been surrounded by poverty and social injustice. These sounds of misery would have been part of his daily experience and London, with the other Songs of Experience poems, protests about the conditions of the working men and women that cause them to call out in agony and protest. 2. Mind-forged manacles The control is so complete that the authorities even control people's thoughts with mind-forged manacles. This is a metaphor to show that free thinking has been locked down. Manacles are also associated with punishment, showing the way people are being punished simply for being poor. Blake is clearly commenting on the lack of freedom of the common people in 18th century Britain. It could also reflect how the daily struggle of simply existing robs the poor of the luxury of thinking. 3. Blackening Church Even aspects of society which are meant to be positive, such as religion, are shown by Blake to be negative, with the word blackening creating a shocking image which is emphasised by the incredibly powerful verb appalls. This highlights how Blake sees the established church as failing the poor. Instead of protecting exploited workers, the church is merely disgusted by the inconvenient noises of pain and fear. 4. Marks of weakness, marks of woe. Blake tells us that he sees marks of weakness, marks of woe. The word mark has different meanings. It could be the physical signs on the people's faces and bodies of the hardness of their lives. It can mean a stain, suggesting that he sees the metaphorical spoiling of his society. There is a sense of hopelessness in this image, as a stain cannot be removed. Alternatively, it can also mean to make a mark or to write. Blake is making a mark as he writes a poem, which records the misery of society. His duty is to challenge the establishment and its way of oppressing the people. It suggests that we too as readers have a duty to record social injustice and there is perhaps a sense of hope in that by recording and witnessing oppression we can challenge and change it. 5. Marriage Hearse The ending works to emphasise the sheer hopelessness which pervades this society. The stanzas build up a picture of misery and the final line, Marriage Hearse, confirms the impression of a bleak world of social injustice. Marriage should be a celebration of new beginnings, but the word hearse, with its association of death, shows the lack of hope for the future. Blake is criticising an unequal, unjust society from over 200 years ago. We should perhaps question whether our society is any more just and equal today, and whether our London is any more free or less oppressed. Learning and using just five quotations from each of your anthology poems is a really good way to do very well in the exams. For more tips like this, more ideas about how to tackle the poems and other GCSE texts, follow the links in the description below.